Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We have just completed the chapter 5 and moving into the sample questions of this chapter. But before that, the exam pattern which will help you to understand how well you can prepare for each chapter and understand what type of questions can be expected. So as a part of this chapter, you will be expecting five mandatory questions from different segments where we have four questions at K4 level, which is to analyze a scenario and select the right option and one at the introduction at K2 level. So putting it all together, you will have five questions coming from this chapter. So let's start with some of the sample questions to understand more about them. So the very first question is here where we talk about a technical test analyst has been invited to the review of an architectural design specification. The review has been called at short notice for the following day and although there is nothing in the analyst's diary for that time and there is also no time to prepare. Which of the following would be the most appropriate response to the invitation? Sometime the examination can expect you to be into a different organization role and also come across such scenarios which they want you to address in a more professional way. And of course, you may sound that you might be doing some of these options as being a part of any organization, but you need to be more polite and more professional when you are answering the question. So we have option A, I'm free at that time and I'll be pleased to attend. First of all, being a senior most person kind of like technical test analyst, you have certain responsibilities. Just because you are invited and you should be present, you just don't go blank with your empty mind and contribute nothing because you have responsibilities also to make a review successful and in fact it is an architecture review so your contribution matters. B. I do not have time to prepare but while I will attend rather than causing a delay. That's Again, I think the most stupid thing to be done when you are not at all prepared was the point of going there. Just marking your presence there is not going to help the organization or does not look professional in terms of adding value to the review process. C. I will not have enough time to prepare for a review meeting tomorrow, so I must decline unless the review can be postponed. All right, that sounds to be a little more professional because you have nothing it prepared as of now as it is being called on a short notice and this is not a management review where you are just asked to contribute your past experience. You are being called to a architectural design review where contribution of technical test analysts matters a lot. D, I cannot attend the review because I'm unfamiliar with the specification. I think if we understand the justification for C, we do know this is not a valid reason to be said that you are just because you do not have familiarity to specification and you are calling yourself as technical test analyst, this reason is not valid. But yeah, first part is good because you are not going to attend, but reason is not relevant. So the most relevant answer here is C being the right answer. That is, I will not have enough time to prepare for a review meeting happening tomorrow, so I must decline unless the review can be postponed. Let's look at the next question here. Number two, here the scenario has given you some of the examples and you need to find the best match. You have been participating in an architectural review of a new product design. This is an embedded product that has severe memory restrictions. Consider the following list of programming practices and problems that can result from using those practices. So mainly you have to do a match the following, but you have to find the perfect match as the right answer. So we have programming practices like connection pooling, data caching, lazy instantiation, or transition concurrencies. Problems, performance impact, transaction loss due to process unavailability, errors in multi-threading logic, and D, stale data. Which of the above is a pro programming practice that can be used to reduce unnecessary memory use in this scenario and what are the possible problems in using the practice? So first of all in this example you should first find out that what exactly they want to know from you. It's just not a blank matching or simple match the following. They say that which of the above is a programming practice that can be used to reduce unnecessary memory use. So the foremost thing is find out which of this option will help you to 
minimize the memory utilization as you're talking about the scenario where it is embedded product and severe memory restrictions are involved. So if we analyze just that as a part of it, we have data caching as one of the option and lazy instantiation, which would be able to help you. And what we would like to explore further in this is to understand that how the lazy instantiation or the caching can be linked to the best or the problems which can occur during that. So we have two options to be picked up from here where the connection programming practices is data caching and number three, so A and C. So let's see the problem associated with that. So number one practice, number two, and the problem D says stale data. So I think when you talk about the data caching, it helps uh, uh, problems, uh, it helps improving the performance, not memory use. Because data caching is helpful when you try to retrieve the same set of instructions again and again, and it just retrieves the information right from the cache memory rather than using the physical memory. So it helps you to improve the performance, but the question is about to reduce unnecessary memory usage. So second is B, practice four, which says transpiration, or sorry, the transaction concurrency. Where transaction concurrency uses more memory because you are having a lot of users being involved at the same time. So concurrent users generally deal with multiple users working on the same transaction at the same time. So it will actually be impacting the performance, not the memory. Whereas C is about lazy instantiation, having a problem to performance impact when the instantiation is needed. I think that's the perfect match as of now, because one is lazy instanti instantiation. This would reduce unnecessary memory use, but does have the possible problems of delayed performance because it takes a lot of time to initiate some of the activities and can uh, result into performance degradation. Whereas if you still want to look at D, though you have got your answer, but yeah, it says connection pooling related to transaction loss due to process unavailability. So connection pooling can help the memory and performance, but the impossible problem is running out of connections and not in losing a process. So that's not a relevant match, but the part one could be very interesting to catch you for the wrong answer. So the right answer here is C, practice three and problem A, which is lazy instantiation and could lead to the problem of performance impact. Let's look at the third question here. You have been participating in architectural design review of a new product design. This is a web-based concurrency trading product that provides real-time information of prices for currencies selected by the user. The following list of practices are mentioned in the design as option for ensuring response time of less than one second and real-time data accuracy under maximum expected loads. So two parameters are listed as a part of the design, that is uh, response times must be less than one and uh, real time data accuracy under maximum expected load. Which of the following practices would, be, would you highlight as most promising for achieving the requirement? So I think it's very, very straightforward that both the parameters come from a performance parameter and performance testing point of view. So the only objective you have is to look for the parameter which can assist you in enhancing the uh, performance parameters of the application. And thus, you may look forward to have the right option here as A, which talks about the load balancing, where data caching can help you with the memory, but not exactly with the expectation which are set. And object orientation is another one which is related but not going to help you completely as object orientation practices does not target the performance efficiency. And D, the data replication. Data replication may not guarantee the constantly changing currency rates are accurately shown in real time or not. So data replication would only help you to recollect information at certain point of time, but not with the exact point which we have to cover as a part of the scenario. So putting it all together, the right answer here is load balancing, which will help you to answer both of them. One is the accuracy under maximum load, and second, the response time for less than one second. So 
that's all from this particular tutorial team we covered some of the sample questions if you have more feel free to comment below i'm there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring and keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning